Oh, all right, Bourbon Quest. It's your host, Bourbon Steve, for another episode here on Bourbon Quest. That's right. Remember, stay hydrated, my friends. Mm. All right. So we got something special tonight. Something that I've never had before. Uh, I got this bottle actually a while back. I mean, literally probably like two years ago. Uh, and then picked up a second one maybe six to nine months ago when I was back up in Kentucky at Lux Road Distilleries. And what am I talking about? This is Lux Row Double Barrel. Yeah. What else is interesting on here? So it's Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Uh, double barrel age, 12 years. Uh, so it's a not a single barrel, but a double barrel. So this particular one, and I believe you can only get these at the um, at the distillery. That's where I got both of mine, anyways. Um, uh, this particular one, the first one I got is barrel number one five one two one six one five and five one five four five two nine. The first one was aged since. Is that right? Yeah. 129.07, the other one aged since 5.407. Um, so yeah, 12 years old. It is 118.4 proof, which I believe stands for something like they started in August the 4th, 2011 or something like that. Let me know. I, I know there's some significance around that, but not 100% sure. Uh, let's see what else is on here. Anything on the tag? You can't read it. It's either I'm getting older, they just make everything so small. But anyways, uh, let's see what it says here on the back. Uh, real roots, real family, real products. The cast, this cast straight bourbon is created from two of the finest 12 year old whiskey selected by our head distiller and bottled to celebrate putting down roots on our own 80 acre slice of Bardstown heaven. Generations from now, 2018 will be the year remembered for Lux Road Distilleries. Distilling are opening its doors, it bottled its heart to the world. Is that what I said? Yeah, it's bottles and its heart to the world. So, what does that mean? So, 2018, I guess is when they started? Oh, that's what it is. The 18 is for 2018. So, maybe January of 2018 is when they started? I don't know. Irregardless, it's cash strength, uh, 118.4 proof, double barrel, Lux Road Distilleries. Yeah. Oh, nice bottle. I mean, huge indention. I mean, I can stick my whole hand in that indention. That's pretty cool. But there's a look at the bottle. Lux Road Distilleries Double Barrel. I don't know why I waited so long to open this. But yeah, in uh, Bardstown, Kentucky. So if you're in Bardstown, I mean, I've had other stuff from Lux Road. Um, waiting to get something else from them, hopefully here soon. Yeah, because they do Blood Oath. Anyways, let's go ahead. This is a fresh uh, uncorking. So get that off of there. I'm excited about this. Let me know what are what are some favorite things that you like bourbon glass from Lux Row. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Uh, obviously, Blood Oath. Um, few others but not a lot they have great merchandise you know that nice people good distillery I think they're gonna continue to put out some good stuff but um, yeah home of uh, rebel and Ezra anyways enough about that this is a fresh cork pop so pause for cork pop Lux roll distilleries double barrel oh hell yeah oh splash off of that Mm, ooh, that's nice. All right, so we're gonna pour some into the glass here. And as always, 
here on Bourbon Quest. We do a fresh uncorking, gets a nice two ounce pour to go into the Infinity bottle, which right now is a, this is the original overflow, overflow, but they kind of mingle their way back into the original eventually. And George will get back over here and help drink down some of this. All right, so we got our Infinity pour. So 12 year old Kentucky straight bourbon, ooh, nice cork, nice heavy mm, copper. Take your glasses off now that the reading portion of this video is over. Mm. That's like rich, dark chocolate, caramel, vanilla, mocha, touch of cherry, orange, oak, mm. more caramel and chocolate. Beautiful color on that. Man, the nose is fantastic on this. I don't even remember what I paid for it. You know, if I had more time, I'd probably do a little bit more research before shooting the videos, but bottom line is I don't. Uh, I've tried to, you know, do a little bit, give you some basic information and stuff. Uh, you know, maybe at some point when time is less valuable. Is that right? More about, I don't know. Anyways, hopefully we can do better in the future on, you know, bring a little bit more backstory and stuff to this, but my main thing is to let you know what's out there, what's available, give you a little bit of insight, some context, and let you take your own bourbon quest. But mm, a little bit of rye spice on that now. Mm, black pepper. Again, that dark, rich milk chocolate. Mm, the nose is superb on this. All right. Cheers, bourbon quest. Ooh, man, it punches you right in the mouth with that, um, oh, good long finish, but it punches you right in the mouth with that, that rye, that mint, totally different from the nose. I wasn't getting any of that on the nose. All right, I'm starting to get a little bit of that mint now. But man, it came off just rich, dark chocolate, vanilla, caramel, cherry, mocha. But now I'm starting to feel some of the. It, it doesn't give you the mash bill on that, but I'm definitely getting some rye spice on that. Yeah, there's nothing on here regarding the mash bill, just the. But it is a bourbon. Cast strength, man. All right, let's go back. Hey, remember, stay hydrated, my friends. Mm. This is, see, I get that mocha, that chocolate. Man, all right, second sip. Wow. And then it's like, just punches you right there with that mint, pine, rye, but oak. I mean, now that on the, on the ladder back end, that vanilla and caramel and chocolate start to come through, but definitely not on the front. The front is just full mint, pine, rye, and then the sweetening, you don't get the sweetness till really on the on the very back end of it. But good hug, good viscosity. I like it. I mean, it's interesting. And and the weird thing about it is the nose and the palate are polar opposites, which is kind of weird and unique. Because I don't get that on the nose. I mean, I get a little bit, but. All right, third sip. Cheers, Bourbon Quest. Ooh. 
Yeah. Hmm. Man, I'd like to know what the mass bill on that is because I'm definitely getting a, a ton of rye and mint and pine, especially on the front and middle. Um, and I'm usually, I'm not a, a big rye person, although I'm developing more, more a flavor for that. And I like it from time to time, but obviously it's still your, your sweet bourbon is still my go-to, but man, uh, I enjoy this because it's it's very complex um, it's enjoyable and confusing at the same time because the the nose and the palate do not line up at all I'll be interesting well this is probably gonna be a while but eventually when I get to the other one if uh, the second model of this that I have how that relates and trying to think it's around give or take 10 to 15 dollars I want to say right around a hundred and thirty bucks um, like I said give or take fifteen dollars um, and again I, I apologize I probably should do a little bit more research and go back and look and see exactly what I mean because I, I have down in my journals and stuff what I paid for them in my inventory and so forth but um, you know I don't know if it's all that important. Uh, do I think this is a buy at around that price point? I mean, probably. I mean, obviously, would I like to see it lower? More like around a hundred bucks is where I think it should be at. But getting it from the distillery, being limited exclusivity, and 12 years old, well, let's factor that in too. Um, I mean, I'm okay with it. I'm not happy about it. Would really like for it. To, I mean, obviously, we all would like things to be cheaper than what they are, whether it be bourbon, gas, food, you know, whatever. But you got to think about, you know, what's going on in the industry, in the world post well, I don't even know if we're in post pandemic yet Jesus but it's 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 one I would say um, I mean I'm not disappointed by it by any means uh, I'm not I'm, I'm not over wowed by it I think it's it's good it's enjoyable it's you know I've had better, I've had worse. Hey, if you haven't done so, also, first off, thank you for subscribing. And if you haven't done so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, yo. Uh, it helps out the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button. That does the channel a favor. And then do yourself a favor, ring that bell for notifications. That way you're just simply notified every time we put out a video, and which is quite a bit of content. I mean, we're a little over a year old, and I think when I looked, we've done 285 videos in 13 months, roughly. So, yeah, do yourself a favor, ring that bell for notifications. Uh, smash that like button, that helps out the channel too, to, for YouTube algorithms to get it out to more people. And then leave a comment, let me know what's your favorite Luxro products, if you've had this, if you've got more information as far as the backstory, how long it's been around, whatever, but and your experience with it. If you've had this before, and I don't know how many of these they do a year or whatever. Like I said, this was the first one I ever gotten got about two years ago, and I'm just now opening it. Um, and then I got another one, you know, six to nine months ago. I guess just because I'm glad I did. I guess because. I like it. I'm trying to think. All right, cheers, Bourbon Quest. Man, it's so interesting. The interesting factor has me a little bit complex because the nose and palate don't match up. I'm contemplating 
whether or not I mean I definitely don't think it would win but should it contend and because again my rules are not when I bought it but when I opened it so I'm contemplating if I should include it in the flights coming up in December end of December for whiskey of the year so that's what I'm trying to decide now is it whiskey of the year contention possibility All right, I've decided. Oh man, have I decided? Uh... You know what? Man, I don't know. I'm, I'm struggling with whether I should put it in for whiskey of the year or not. It's, it's got me so complex because it's it's so unique it's I think it's very good it's very enjoyable I'm glad I bought it would I buy it again maybe it's just interesting enough to be on the verge and in my thinking in my head was if you have to think about whether or not it should be in contention for the whiskey of the year, then it probably shouldn't. I mean, that makes sense, right? But on the, on the other end, it's so different from most of the others that I've had, especially with the contrast between the nose and the palate, that I think maybe it deserves a shot. All right, what the hell? Normally, I would lean towards my first intuition is that if you have to think whether or not it should be in for contention, it probably shouldn't be. But because it has me complexed, has me intrigued, I'm going to go ahead and put it in there because that will give me another reason to have a sip or two of it. I definitely don't think it will win, but I think it deserves a shot. And you never know. If you make it into the playoffs, you get a shot. Whether you know you're the uh, 85 Bears and freaking awesome, or even if you're you know the undefeated Patriots a few years back, you got knocked out. You went undefeated in the regular season, but you couldn't complete the deal like the 1973 Dolphins. So you know it it could upset somebody. So I think I, I'm putting it in. That's my decision. There you go. There you have it. It's, I would say it's a buy. It's definitely worth your time going between the nose and the palate, experiencing it. It's definitely, if it was bad, I wouldn't put it in there. It's not bad. It's good. I think it's, for some people, it's probably freaking amazing. I think it's off profile for my particular palate generally, but it does have me intrigued and I enjoy it. Man, so minty and raw on the pine. Mm. I'm going to have to go do some research on this to find out what the mash bill is and stuff on this. But maybe you could save me a time and do me a favor. If you know the mash bill on this, um, and, and please leave a comment and let me know. And also let me know what your experience has been with this. If you've had this similar effect that I have with it being way off profile between the nose and the palate but still interesting and intriguing and enjoyable um yeah so i would say if you get a chance uh, yeah take the risk buy one 
and see what you think. Um, I mean, it's not my all-time favorite, um, but I like it enough to where I, I'll probably hold off that judgment until I open the, the second one on, since I already, I mean, obviously I have already bought one again, but that was prior to tasting it. I'd like to have the second one and see if I would continue to go forward with that. And then also what their future plans with are continuing to do a, a double barrel. Um, I like the concept of a double barrel. Um, I don't want to go to a triple barrel or whatever, but I, I do find it intriguing and interesting because you, know, you got your you got your main categories. You got obviously your know, regular stuff, whether it be Jim Beam, Jack Daniels, Old Number Seven, Elijah Craig, that are mass produced. Then, or maybe Elijah Craig's, whatever. Then you got your category of small bats, which there's no legal definition for. I mean, that could be literally two barrels could be a small batch or 200 barrels or 2,000 barrels because there's no legal definition for what a small batch is. Uh, then you got obviously your single barrels. And so you got, you know, whatever, your run the mill. Jim Beam, Jack Daniels, whatever, Bullet, and then you got your your small batch category, if you will, your single barrel category, and then I like that. I like this idea of a double barrel instead of just taking one barrel, take two, just blend those, just those two, and I, I think that's a intriguing thing. I don't. Let me know and also in your comments, anybody else that does a double barrel, I don't know if I have anything that's necessarily classified as a double barrel, I've done this right here. All right, I'm gonna take one more pour just cause it's, it's really intriguing. All right, let me know what's in your glass bourbon class. Once again, before we sign off, Hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, leave a comment, ring that bell for notifications, and most importantly, I just want you to know, well, cheers first. I just, ooh, I just want you to know that my wish for you is that all your bourbon quest dreams come true. Ha <laughs> ha, that's a wrap, yo. This is this is good stuff. It's really interesting. Oh, I'm glad it's in the infinity bottle. All right. See you next time. Bye bye.